Hello Unity fans and welcome back to my Hexmap game development series. Now that we have a decent user interface going to place our woodcutter and stonemason cabins on the map, I think it's about time we produced some food for our inhabitants, so that our town can start growing. This video will focus a bit less on the technical aspects, since we've already covered a lot of that while developing the functionality of our woodcutters and stonemasons. However, I will briefly show how we expand on the existing functionality to quite easily add in a completely new resource, a different floor plan in terms of the farm's layout, and get our farmer harvesting in no time. I've already hinted at farming in many of the previous videos. But today we actually get to design and implement our farm all in one video. Keep an eye out for links to specific past videos in the top right if you'd like to follow the history of the functionality we're expanding on today. The floor plans of our cabins have been fairly small up to now, with one ring of hexes around the center catering for our outbuildings and enough walking space to ensure nobody gets stuck. For our farm we need to go a bit bigger. This is mainly because the farm's resources are not already part of the map, and we need extra space to cater for these. Still, we don't want our farms to completely clog up the map in terms of unit movement, so we need to design it keeping this in mind. I played around with a few configurations on a plot consisting of two rings of hexes around the center hex, and ultimately found something that I liked. Like the other cabins, I wanted to have two upgrade locations for the farm so I followed the same design there. The outbuildings are situated towards the back of their hexes, so that units can still pass between the house and the outbuildings. But rather than just walking out into the world on the opposite side of the upgrade buildings, for the farm I have another hex there that can contain some random farm buildings, a chicken coop and a well at this stage. If we now place two hexes of farmland either side of each outbuilding plot, we have six plots containing farm resources which feels like enough to work with. We also have three gateways to and from our farm, and there are three more hexes around the edge where units can also pass freely. All in all, I feel this gives enough substance for the farm, while not taking up excessive amounts of land. So let's get some proper graphics onto the floor plan. We use the same prefab linker script we've used for the other cabins in order to let the map generator know which prefabs to use to construct the farm. We could also design a few slightly different looking farms and let one be chosen at random each time. Now we still have a main cabin part and two upgrade parts as before, so nothing much changes here. The farm's models are just a bit bigger now. We build these three parts up separately. It can be difficult to align everything, so I use temporary hexes that show where the real hexes would be, then align everything to these before hiding them again. You have to make sure all the rotations and positions are correct so that it creates a complete farm when stitched together, and not something like this Picasso farm. We also use a similar user interface icon as before, and slightly adjust the on-click events, position and animations that show and hide the icons. I have changed the icon design so it now shows the building type you want to build in the center and the requirements to build it around the edge. Like before, when you click on the icon, we also need to test whether the land you intend to build on is suitable. We use the same functionality we've developed for the other cabins. Adjust it to cater for two rings around the center instead of one. So if you try to place your farm over existing resources, rivers, lakes or land that is too uneven, the problematic hexes are pointed out in the UI. When we found an acceptable location, we can click to place the farm. Since it will be producing its own resources, we don't have the situation like for the woodcutters and stonemasons where we rotate it to face the nearest resource. We just add a random rotation to it for now, so they're not all rotated the same way. With the buildings in place, we can now procedurally add some full-grown corn to the farm. We follow the same process as with the trees and stone, creating small patches of corn on the seven possible locations of the hex the center of the hex and the six directions. While it looks like one cornfield, each of the patches of corn is now a game object that can be interacted with. 
You will also notice that not all seven patches are always filled with corn, leaving some empty spaces at random, just as with the trees. Of course, we can set the parameters so that the farm always populates all seven locations. So just like the woodcutter walks to a specific tree, chops it down and saws up the logs, a farmer can walk up to a specific patch of corn and harvest it. The woodcutter has an extra preparation step, namely the chopping, but like the stonemason who just starts harvesting when he gets to the rock, there is also no preparation step for the farmer. So he will just start harvesting the corn when he gets there. Let us now get some farmers to toil the land for us. This is again straightforward. Just like we created a few different woodcutters and stonemasons, we create a few different farmers. They have no tools for the moment, and we just need to position some harvested corn correctly inside the baskets on the ground and the baskets on their backs. We make sure all the prefabs have been referenced correctly and our existing script actually already knows what to do. There are a few places where we need to cater for farmer-specific functionality as opposed to woodcutter and stonemason functionality. For example, we need to add a new animation for gathering as opposed to sawing or hitting with a pickaxe. But these are straightforward given what's already in place, and in no time the farmer is up and running. Aren't we glad now that the corn is already full grown? We actually already have a growing script available for the trees that can also let the corn slowly grow first before harvesting it. But that script has not been incorporated into the main system seamlessly yet. So for now, we just create corn that's ready to harvest. You'll notice the corn swaying gently and shrink away when it has been harvested. For this, we actually use the exact same script as for the trees. We just activate only the swaying and dissolving functionality at the correct time, and don't use the shivering and timber parts of the script. The farmer will now search for the nearest corn, walk to it, harvest it, and carry it back to the nearest mill, and repeat the process until there's nothing left. But you may actually get a surprise as well. Since the neighboring farm still had some corn left, this farmer actually found a path to it harvested it and brought it back to his own mill. To keep him on his farm, we need to limit the search algorithm to only venture out a limited number of hexes in some special cases like these, which is very easy to do by breaking out of the search algorithm after a set number of hexes has been considered. There is one technical thing I want to quickly address here since it will be quite important in future videos as well and that's the system I now use to block movement through certain edges. In a past video, I've added an invisible version of walls and roads to set up blocked and open hex edges, just like I visualized it earlier in the planning phase. A shortcoming of this system is that only a change in walled status from one hex to the other is considered, so inside a larger walled off area, you cannot have blocked edges. I thought about a better way to implement this, and the answer is a lot more elegant than what I'd done before, allows you far more flexibility, and even for less effort than before. Instead of having just one walled indicator for each hex, and then indicating actual allowed path with roads in each of the directions, we now create an array of six indicators per hex, each one simply indicating whether one of the edges of the hex is blocked or not. In this way, you can set each edge of each hex separately. What's more, you can actually allow one-way traffic through an edge, but block it from the other side, since the two hexes bordering on that edge could have different indicators. When we calculate movement cost in the search algorithm now, we just include a test for whether the edge we want to travel through on the hex we're currently on is traversable or blocked. If we later require more control over movement cost, we can expand this true or false indicator into an actual value, so we can set different movement costs between hexes. But for now, we're just happy with being able to block movement on each edge we require units to stay away from. I'll quickly indicate the edges that are blocked on the farm floor plan. This allows units maximum freedom of movement around and through the farm, without them passing through the obstacles and buildings. And at last, we have some nourishment for our hard workers. With this in place, we could really start expanding into a proper town. 
Please consider subscribing if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye.